This is a weird one, to, to put it lightly. This is something that sounds more like a YouTube poop than anything else the more I think about it. A weird callback to a thing that should have really stayed in the past. I haven't watched or heard about this show in more than half a decade, and the first time I'm even thinking about it is I don't even know how to describe it to you, really. It's more of a fever dream than anything else. In case you didn't know, Fanboy and Chum Chum was a Nickelodeon 3D show from the early 2010s that wasn't the best, to put it lightly. Honestly, if I could point to the most early 2010s show there was, it would probably be this one. It had annoying characters, gross out, a lot of weird pop culture references that were really on the nose. That said, it had a few things going for it. For what it's worth, the animation itself holds up very well considering the time it was released. It's still very fluid and colorful. It's hard to make 3D look good on a TV show budget, but they did it well enough, especially given how old the show is. Character designs are ugly and horrible, but the animation itself isn't bad. It's over a decade old too, Jesus Christ. It's... <laughs> It's scary. The show also had its moments every now and then. Again, I'm going mostly on my old memories, but it had its moments. And now, 10 years after the fact, it's getting a video made on it because there's a creepy 30 year old in its community who's just been up to so much. Because believe it or not, the fandom sort of made a comeback. I know it's weird to call this a fandom, but I, I guess it is one. I wouldn't say it was a massive one by any means, but the fact that the show had one at all is impressive, especially given how even back then it was hated and it only lasted two seasons. Doesn't help that the show aged as well as cancer, although I'm not judging kids who like it. Truth be told, when I was younger, I, I, I liked it way too much and I genuinely got angry when people would make fun of it. And now, 10 years after the fact, to put an end to this curse, I have to talk about some weirdo in that community. They go by the name of Emmeline Lenny Eddie. I don't know if I'm saying that right, 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 but for simplicity, I'm going to just call them Emma. I only learned about this person because a friend found their Kiwi Farms by chance, and by God, they got up to a lot, and I beat a lot. Emma was a fan of the show when it first came out, but her popularity grew when it started blowing back up again on Instagram, because to be fair to Emma, the way she draws her characters are in a very similar style to the 3D one that the show uses. She manages to capture the show rather well with the colors and the cold dead eyes the 3D models gave and the terrible designs. Uh, but there were a couple problems that quickly turned against her and people started realizing that maybe she isn't a good person. For one thing, this might be more of a personal issue, but her art style reminds me a lot of Shadman's. Had I not found this on her Kiwi, I would have just assumed it's his. And in case you don't know who he is, because he's a whole different thing. Long story short, he's an infamous porn artist who also draws a lot of questionable things. Some of that including CP of both fictional and real children. Kind of realized how I can't sound excited for that. Emma also decided to hop on that train, but this time she draws porn of fanboy and chum chum characters. All of the kids are like 11 and <laughs> it, it, she sometimes ships them with 20 year olds. And the weirdest part is Emma Emma wasn't just some random loser in the community, she was one of the biggest people. She had even gone to meet some of the creators of the show, but when she blew up, people found a lot of Rule 34 of Fanboy and Chum Chum in her exact art style, and they started putting two and two together. And when people confronted her on her mass production of CP, her responses to them were very vague and disgusting to put it lightly. She tries playing it off as being quirky for sexualizing 10 year olds most of her defenses boil down to they aren't real children so it's fine they're a cartoon and it's so odd how confident she is in her statements and after this was all exposed on Instagram she tried to play it off as a joke as if it suddenly made it okay <laughs> she also made Undertale incest porn so you know that's pretty cool and because of all that the creators of the show quickly dropped her because good on them for not supporting this and you know most 30 year olds shouldn't have 
to be told that sexualizing children and making incest porn is okay or normal, especially doing it on public platforms. And she was so unaware of what was happening and how people didn't like what she was doing and exposing her. And it was almost to an unbelievable degree that she was so clueless. Instead of understanding that people were making fun of her and her old fucked up fan fictions when she was exposed, she thought people liked them, so she started posting NSFW on her Twitter, you know, the underage ones, and started asking people to recommend situations for what she should draw. <laughs> and obviously this didn't stay for long. Again, I can't really show you any of her NSFW art for obvious reasons. It isn't easy to censor either, but just know it's not fun to look at. And her fan fictions are just as awful, if not worse. They include rape, torture, shipping adults with children, for hell. She literally tagged multiple of her fan fictions with flat out pedophilia. So, you know, she knows what she's doing. I would read the fan fictions too, but given how all of them are either torture porn or involve children or both, I'm not going to. You can find all her amazing stuff and links to it on her Kiwi farms if you're interested. Although just know you should use a VPN before you use it. And most of her stories include a lot of torture. And just so you know, she hasn't stopped. Hell, the day before I wrote this script, she had just updated a story <laughs> that included torture. And these stories aren't short either. Most of them have over 8,000 words. And some of them or tens of thousands of words long. Whole scriptures dedicated to fanboy and chum chum, torture under age, and SFW. How do you decide to spend hours of your life to writing torture porn for a shitty kids show from the early 2010s that no one cares about anymore? It isn't like she keeps this to herself or anything. I mean, nothing justifies sexualizing children, but she has given anxiety attacks to children on Instagram by posting gore pictures of fan boy being shot in the head <laughs> to a group chat. Why anyone would draw a child character being shot in the head for other children to see for fun is beyond me. If, but you know, she did that because why not? And she's really creepy towards kids, if not sometimes downright predatory. I don't know if that's too strong a word, so you tell me and give your opinion. But for this one kid, they were an artist on Instagram that she followed that was around 14 years old. And they drew a lot of messed up gore art, mostly of the show, and although that's bad, it wouldn't have anything to do with Emma beyond her disgusting influence corrupting kids. But the problem is she would actively encourage this kid to draw fucked up stuff like this in the comments and would like all their posts. The kid also wrote really fucked up fanfiction on Wattpad, which I assume she probably encouraged. Now thankfully the kid's account has been taken down, and hopefully they're doing better mentally, and what I really hope for is that Emma has no more direct exposure to them. And there's so much more. The more you go through the Kiwi, the more CP you find, the more backburner accounts you can find that were made specifically to post fanboy and chum chum NSFW with characters that aren't aged up, with characters that are sometimes way older than the other ones. Stuff I can't even attempt to censor. Not only because I don't think I could get it past YouTube anyway, I just don't want to look at it. She also sometimes draws realistic depictions of these characters, which would be fine if she didn't have a history of being creepy towards children and, you know, hadn't actively sexualized the, the same children for years. You can't just defend all this by saying they're not real Lamau, so, you know, it's good. Especially when she ships them with adults, especially when she draws NSFW of them. And you can even find weird videos she's made of them making out with each other. It's a long history of, of, I don't know. I know fandoms are weird. We all know that creepy people do get around, but they're usually based around something that's popular and, you know, good. Like My Hero Academia, for example. It has a lot of weird shipping and porn of minor characters, and that is okay. But, you know, at least people know about that show and care about it 
still, why someone, let alone a grown-ass woman, would dedicate their life to a show that relied entirely on fart humor? I, I will never know. So yeah, if this is your first time hearing about the show in a while, just know that I had the same reaction and somewhat denial that this is real, that this person is real, and that she did this and is now trying to ignore it as if it didn't happen and she didn't give a bunch of kids anxiety attacks for no other reason than just because she wanted to. Don't go harass her by any means. Uh, I think she's gross, and I don't think she should just be ignoring what she did, but harassment doesn't do anything. Thanks for watching. If you have anything else that's really obscure you want me to take a look at, leave a comment. I don't know how you can get more obscure than this, but uh, uh, you can try. As always, I want to thank my members. Their names will be in the description as well, with a special thank you to Sun's Embrace, Sin of Production, Steely, Simpa Fidelis, Waffly Waffles and Ura Marine Corps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.